Hey YouTube, it's Grace and I really need to restock my Etsy shop. So I figured why not make a tutorial and just show you guys how I make my Minecraft inspired jewelry. So I am just starting off by making a grid and for that I use paper, a ruler, a pen, and a pencil. And so I'm just going ahead and marking across all four sides every half centimeter. This is just the size that I chose for the video. Um, you can really make it any size you want. But then I'm just connecting all of the lines and turning it into a grid and then cutting it out. I have a different grid that I will be using for this video, but I just wanted to show you guys how I make it. Um, but then I'm just laminating it with packing tape so that it lasts longer and doesn't rip because I use these pretty often. Then I just cut the tape out and here is the comparison between the grid I just made and the one that I usually use. The one that I usually use is just a bit smaller, but other than that they are the same. And once I have my grid made, I go ahead and look for references. So I just type whatever and then put PNG at the end for the transparent background. Here are some of the ones that I've saved from the past and I just decided for this video to start with the diamond sword because it is a classic Minecraft item. Um, but then I just tape down my grid and I'm ready to go. So now I'm just going to lay down the plastic on top of the grid and tape it down so that when I'm drawing it doesn't move around a lot. And I usually use a fine tip black sharpie to draw the outline. And now I'm just going to be matching everything up. So I'm going to start on this corner and I see it starts at the bottom and goes up three and over two. So I'm going to be transferring the same thing over. We'll start here, I'll go up three and over two. And then after that it goes two up diagonal to the left. So I'm going to do that one, two. Now just to keep everything symmetrical, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So then I'll basically just continue this whole process with the entire outline until I have the whole thing copied down. At this point, I decide whether I want to do a necklace or earrings, because if I do earrings, then I need to make one more of these, but if I do a necklace, then I stop here. But since my Etsy shop is basically out of earrings, I decided to do that. And once you have your outline done, it is time to color it in. And for the colors, they don't need to be exactly the same, but they do need to be pretty close. And I usually use Prismacolor pencils, so I chose a dark brown and a light brown for the handle, and then these three sort of teal colors for the sword itself. So then using the same process I did for the outline, I'm just looking, I'm starting on the corner, I see that it's really dark around the edge, so I'm using my darkest color to fill that in. And then I look back to the reference and see what other pixels match that same color and then fill those in with the same one. Next I'll be doing the handle and I think I'm just going to use dark brown for the outside and light brown for the inside. And now that I have that done, the rest is really simple. I just have a light teal and a medium teal. I'll be using the medium shade to fill in here, here, and also down the middle. And then I'll be using the lighter shades to fill in on the outsides. Now that the design is done, I took them off of the grid and I'm going to set them aside while I make a few other designs. I'm going to do red mushrooms, which are super simple, and vines, which are a little bit more complicated. So starting with the mushroom, I'm doing the same thing as I did with the sword and just getting some colors that are pretty close to what I see on the reference. And now I'm just copying down the design, which is super simple, so it's not taking very long. Now that I have it traced out, I'm looking back at the reference and seeing the darkest reds at the bottom of the mushroom. I'm just filling those in. I kind of have to color at a weird angle so that the camera can actually see what I'm doing. Um, but I usually like to work one color at a time, and I also like to do both earrings at a time just to make sure that they both end up looking exactly the same. And before I move on to the light red, I'm going to fill in the polka dots just so that I don't accidentally color any of them the wrong color. I think these turned out pretty cute, so now I'm going to move on to the vines. Now the main difference with this design compared to the other ones is that there's like blank space in the middle. So because of that and that the outsides aren't really straight lines, I'm going to need to count very carefully. Now that I have the designs traced, I'm going to start coloring them in. Thankfully the colors are pretty simple, but since the design is more complex, it will take longer. And once again, I'm going to be doing one color at a time on both designs just to keep them looking the same. I finished the darkest green and now I'm working on the lightest one. And then after this, I can just use the medium green to fill in everything else.
Even though I was really careful with counting, they did end up slightly different. So instead of selling them as a pair of earrings, I'm going to make them into separate necklaces. So these are how the designs turned out. Since I am restocking my Etsy shop, I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch more pairs off camera and then I'll come back and show you what I do next. So this is everything that I got drawn out today. I ran out of the plastic, but I pretty much used every little scrap that I had left. My next step is to cut out the designs and punch a hole into them just so that you can connect them to the jewelry. And there are a few different places that I typically add the hole punch. Um, sometimes I just punch through to the design. Sometimes I incorporate it into the design and sometimes I kind of like add on top of it. Another tip is to cut these out over a trash can or at least have one nearby. That way you don't have a million little pieces of plastic all over your floor. I just finished cutting everything out. So now I'm going to preheat my oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and start baking. I always bake them on parchment paper and I never do more than two pairs at a time because right when they come out of the oven, I need to flatten them and I don't want them to cool before I can do that. I don't have a super good view here. Once the sides start curling, that's how you know it's working. Once they're almost completely uncurled, I'll go ahead and take them out and then immediately just press them flat with a fork for a few seconds until they are cool enough to touch, which normally doesn't even take a minute. Normally I don't set a timer for how long I leave these in, I kind of just eyeball it. And then once they're out of the oven, this is the total amount that they shrink by. And before it's more of like a paper, you can bend it. Um, and after it is much harder. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but when you're baking them, make sure that you have the colored pencil side up. Now that I have a big pile of little Minecraft charms, I can start turning them into jewelry. I'll be using little ear wire hooks and jump rings for this. I'm gonna start by taking a jump ring and holding that in one pliers and then opening it with the other one just by twisting it. Then I'm just going to put the little charm on and then I'll put the earring piece on. And then after that, I just close it and bam, earring. And I'll just go over this one more time just for good measure. So I take the jump ring, open it up, put the little charm on, put the earring piece on and close it. Necklaces are a little bit different, but I'll go ahead and show you. So I start with the charm and then I have a lobster clasp and then a big jump ring, a medium jump ring and a tiny jump ring. And I don't remember the sizes of these because I don't have the packaging anymore, but yeah. And then I also cut a piece of this necklace chain here to be 18 inches long, which is just my preference, but you guys can change the length if you would like to. So starting off, I'm gonna take the smallest jump ring and open that up and then connect that to the chain. Then I'm going to take the lobster clasp and put that on as well before I close it. And then on the other end, I'm going to take the medium sized jump ring, open that up and loop that through. And now I have a way to close the necklace, make it an actual loop. After that, I'm going to be taking my biggest jump ring, which is slightly bigger than the ones I used for the earrings, um, just so that it can move around on the chain easier. I'm gonna open that up, put on the charm, and then also put through the chain and close that. And then going through this one more time, just because we start with the smallest jump ring, open this up and connect it to the chain and then put the lobster clasp on there. And then taking the medium sized jump ring, opening that up and putting it on the other end. Then I take the biggest jump ring and open that, put the charm on, put the chain on and close it. All right, I officially have everything transformed into either a necklace or earrings. And the last step is just painting a layer of Mod Podge on top. And doing this just makes sure that the design won't fade over time or get damaged in any way. Kind of just helps to preserve it for longer. And this stuff does dry clear. It just takes about an hour or so. Although usually I will wait a full 24 hours between the time that I actually paint the Mod Podge on and the time that I ship the item out just to make sure that nothing will stick to the packaging. Here is what everything looks like completely dry. I'm setting it up just to take pictures for Instagram and then I'm gonna list everything on Etsy. So that's pretty much how I do it. I hope this tutorial was helpful um, if you wanna try it for yourself or if you don't, um, my Etsy link is in the description. And as always, if you have any questions or anything, either comment down below or DM me on Instagram and I will be sure to get back to you. But that pretty much concludes this video. Um, so thank you for watching and I will see you next time.